Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about science. I'm sitting here drinking my Goya coconut water and thinking about herd immunity. Stockholm and New York City both appear to be approaching herd immunity, but they took very different paths to get there. COVID-19 deaths in Sweden peaked in mid-April after a lot of nursing homes got infected, but they've been declining ever since and now they're very close to zero. And the number of new cases in Sweden has also dropped off sharply and appears headed down towards zero. Sweden had a peak a few weeks ago, which was caused largely by the fact that they increased the amount of testing which they were doing. But at the current time, they have a very low number of new cases and also a very low number of new deaths. That's what herd immunity looks like. Very few people are getting infected anymore and very few people are dying. Bloomberg has an article out today saying that Sweden is far from herd immunity, but the infection and death rate data appears to show otherwise. Anders Tegnell is the architect of Sweden's strategy. He's a very strong opponent of lockdowns as well as wearing masks. The Swedish strategy was based around the idea of getting the low-risk population exposed in a controlled fashion. Tegnell understood that you can't get past this sort of epidemic until the country achieves herd immunity. So Sweden kept children under the age of 15 in school and they kept their restaurants and bars open. Sweden rejected violating human rights and made as many restrictions as possible voluntary rather than mandatory. Other than problems they had early on in nursing homes, it appears that Sweden's strategy has been a resounding success. Now let's look at another place which also appears to be approaching herd immunity, and that's New York City. New York had a huge spike in April and had the highest death rate in the world. About a thousand people were dying every day. Governor Cuomo sent thousands of sick people into nursing homes, resulting in a massive toll of lives. But since then, deaths have dropped off sharply, and earlier this week, New York City reported no deaths at all on one day. And New York has the same shape curve for daily new cases. Back in April, they had a big peak, but since then it's dropped off sharply. And now New York is not having a lot of new cases. I don't believe there's any good way to explain the drop in the number of deaths and the drop in the number of cases in New York, other than to associate it with the idea that they are approaching herd immunity. Some people would argue that the drop has been due to mandatory mask rules in New York. But if you look at other states like New Mexico with mandatory mask rules, you can see that the number of new cases has sharply increased since they made a mandatory mask rule back in the middle of May. And in Houston, a month after the state reopened, they had three weeks of massive protests. The vast majority of the protesters were wearing masks. Yet after the protest, there was a huge spike in the number of cases, and there's also been a large spike in the number of deaths. So it's pretty difficult to make the case that the decline in cases in New York is due to masks when masks haven't worked particularly well in other locations. I believe that both Sweden and New York are close to herd immunity. I don't believe there's any way to explain their downward curves other than the idea that most people are no longer vulnerable to the virus. That is the definition of herd immunity. Sweden has achieved it through a very thoughtful scientific process. They achieved it without lockdowns. They achieved it without shutting down their under 15 schools. They did everything they could to avoid violating human rights. New York also appears to have achieved herd immunity, but they achieved it through massive carnage and chaos. New York violated human rights at every step of the way, and unlike Sweden, most of the people in New York are unaware of the fact that they are relatively safe now. In fact, most residents of New York have probably never even heard of the term herd immunity. What occurred in New York was completely insane, but now it appears that the virus has largely run its course, just like it has in Sweden. Before I finish up, I want to talk about the completely different approach which was taken by New Zealand. New Zealand has had a very low number of deaths and a low number of cases. This was partly due to the fact that they're located in the southern hemisphere and weren't particularly vulnerable at the time when the epidemic first came through. Coronaviruses are primarily active during winter, and it was summer in New Zealand when the epidemic hit Europe. Geography isn't the only factor, though. New Zealand also made the choice to isolate themselves from the rest of the world. They wanted to keep the virus from coming across their borders. 
This approach appears to have been extremely successful if your only concern is the number of people who died from the virus. The big problem that New Zealand faces now is that unlike places like Sweden and New York, they not only haven't achieved herd immunity, but they have very little immunity at all. They're very vulnerable to the virus at this point. There's no obvious path forward for them to reopen their borders. As soon as they reopen the borders, the virus will come back in. New Zealand's tourist industry is decimated and they're isolated from the rest of the world. They appear to have painted themselves into a corner. Let's look at this story at the bottom from CNN. New Zealand has their COVID patients locked up in detention facilities. Five days ago, a man cut through the quarantine fence to visit the liquor store. Now let's compare that to Sweden where the population feels safe their borders are open and they're having very few deaths and new cases. Unless an effective vaccine appears in the near future, it will become obvious in a few weeks, no matter how much the press lies about it, that Sweden's approach was smart and the one taken by New Zealand was based on panic, not science. New Zealanders have allowed fear to cut themselves off from the rest of the world. Toto likes the human rights and science-based approach taken by Sweden but he's not particularly fond of the panic and fear-based approach of New Zealand. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.